Let us pray. And Lord, now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Last summer I was reunited in friendship with a person by the name of uh, Gary Harbor. And Gary is a brigadier general, uh, retired now, served in the Army, and was a leader in the Guard here in the state of Tennessee. And I had the privilege of performing the ceremony for his daughter marriage ceremony last summer. Last week he sent me an email with a story in it related to Memorial Day. And I struggled with whether or not I would use that story. It's authentic, it's real. But I thought I would begin with that story this morning. And it opens with the old gentleman standing in front of the shopping center, the hood up on the car, his head ducked under the hood. Obviously, there's a problem. This young man comes out of the shopping center, and the old man asks him if he would be willing to help or assist in getting some help. And the young man said to him, Why, well, somebody your age, old man, they ought not even be letting you drive. And then he jumped in his Suburban and took off. And a little while, another young man came out, saw the old man. His wife was in the car, and he came over and said, May I help you? And he told him what the problem was. And this young man went down to a service center and uh, told them what the situation was and asked them if they would come over and help this old gentleman and his wife. And he said, I want to give you my card. Whatever it costs, you just put it on my card. And so he came back and told the gentleman that he had gotten him some help. And in the process of talking there, the old gentleman realized that the younger man had a marine ring on his finger. And they began to talk, and the old gentleman said, well, I was also a Marine. Well, the story goes that the repair work was done, and as these two, the old man and the young man, talked, they exchanged pleasantries and uh, talked a little bit about their service, and uh, as the young man left, the old man handed him his card. Well, he got down the road just a little bit and the young man picked the card up and he looked at it. And there had a statement on the card. There was the old man's name. And printed in gold letters, it had member of the U.S. Congressional Medal of Honor Society. And the young Marine realized he'd been in the presence of an American hero. Today, we remember those who paid the supreme sacrifice. We remember those who gave their lives and asked nothing in return. And so can we be thankful? And can we be blessed? And can we again think about not just our commitment to our civic responsibilities, but also to the one who himself paid the supreme sacrifice on our behalf? And this one of whom I speak in the text today is preparing his disciples for the time when he's going to be gone. But he said, I'm going to send you another friend. 
I'm going to send you another companion. I'm going to send you the advocate, the paraclete. And that comes from those two Greek words, para and kaleo, and just means simply to call beside. I'm going to send one who will come beside you and who will stand with you in all of your life, regardless of what you have to face, what you go through. Even if you pay the supreme sacrifice, here is one who will walk with you even in death. And you know, it came to me in the first place that Jesus reminds us that we are loved. Every one of us are loved. We are loved by God. We are loved by Jesus Christ. And we can be thankful today on this weekend or any weekend of the year that what we come here to do every day, every week, week in and week out is a reminder that this one we call Jesus Christ does love us and care for us. And we are encouraged Therefore, to love others because this is how the world knows that we are Christ because we love others. There's a story that's been in the, in the papers uh, about a class or a, a school system that were using the computers to try to up the performance rating of the students. And in this particular school, they were offering this program to all the students except the special ed classes. But the special ed teachers, rightfully so, got up in arms. And so, they offered the same opportunity to the special ed people. And I can tell you all about that story, but I just one part of it that really spoke to me in reference to this point, and it was this. There was a young man in the special education class whose name was Raymond. And Raymond had everything in the world against him. The background... Uh, his incapacity. But anyway, as he worked through that maze of problems, he began to blossom. And one of the teachers came to him and said, could you explain to... And he looked at the teacher and he said, look, he said, all the students call me retard. But the computer calls me Raymond. Isn't it amazing how that we sense that we're cared for, that we love, that we are loved? Isn't it amazing how the power of that value and the power of that emotion just propels us into a world that we never dreamed that we would experience. That's what I love about this scripture. Jesus reminds us that we are loved. The second thing it seems to me that Jesus' words remind us of is that he will always be with us. He will always be with us. As a matter of fact, he says on another occasion, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. When the, the angels announced his coming to the world, they said he would be called Emmanuel, which means God, God with us. 
How many of you have ever had surgery? Doctors, there's nothing left, left for you to do. Everybody's had it. Read a story this week, too, about a gentleman who was going to have open heart surgery. And this particular nurse came into his room the day before he was going to have surgery, and she introduced herself. And she said, I'm going to be your nurse. And she said, when you go in for surgery tomorrow, my hand is going to be on you. And she said, now you're going to be disoriented when you come out of surgery. But she said, I want you to know that, you, that the hand you feel on my shoulder right now, on, on your shoulder right now, will be there when you come out of surgery tomorrow. Well, the next day after surgery, sure enough, he was very incapacitated, but he was alert, but he couldn't move his body. But he felt that nurse's hand and knew that she was with him. And after he recovered and reported on his well-being, he told everybody that the knowledge that that nurse's hand was on his shoulder, that she was with him, made all the difference in the world. And I want to remind you this morning, those of you who have family members in the hospital struggling with, those of you that are dealing with uh, the issue of Alzheimer's and, and dementia, those of you that are dealing with problems in your family, those of us are facing difficulties and obstacles that seem to be insurmountable, let us take heart. Let us wear the medal this morning of Jesus Christ that says he will always be with us. And then finally, Jesus said, because I live, you will live also. You know, you don't have to go to the mountaintop. You don't have to get on a spaceship and go to outer space to realize this. All you have to do is be open to that gentle whisper of God. Christ says, because I live, you will live also. Now we're going to sing a song in just a minute. It appears to be a contemporary song. Jackson, it's getting a little age on it now. But I don't know if you've ever heard the story behind the song written by Bill and Gloria Gaither. It was the late 60s. Uh, they had a, a daughter, four years old. I think her name was Amy. And then they had a second daughter who was just three months old. And Gloria found out that she was expecting again. And they didn't know what in the world they were going to do. You know, it was too close together. And Bill had had mononucleosis uh, his sister was going through a divorce, and you just didn't divorce in that family. It devastated the family. One of his friends, closest companions, accused them of being in the music business simply because they wanted to make money, not to do ministry. And so he went into a deep, deep, deep depression. And if you remember, and I was in school at the time, race relations 
You know how that was? The world was war-torn, but in 1970, that child, they named him Benjamin, came. And as a very close friend came to build in Gloria and prayed for him at the birth of that child, they said that the words of this song, Because He Lives, just began to flow out of them. Out of gratitude for the healing of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ in their lives. And we're going to sing that in just a minute. But I want to close with this to take us back to the very beginning. Yesterday... My two brothers and I and our sons, we went back to the place where we were raised, went into the valley. The older adults were over there not long ago. We went up onto the cemetery, Crown Over Cemetery, and right there under the tree lies my uncle Walter, my mother's brother. He spent, during World War II, 22 months in a PO, German POW camp. He was hit by shrapnel, and somehow or another, they gave him medical attention, and then they put him in prison. He stayed for 22 months. They didn't know he was alive until he got back to the States. They thought he was dead. And then, from there, we drove on down through the valley, into Stevenson, Alabama, to drive me to Bridgeport, and to South Pittsburgh. We went by Russell Cave. My grandpa used to own that property before uh, the Depression uh, took it. And then we went up into Orm, Tennessee, and we went to Mount Carmel Cemetery. And at Mount Carmel Cemetery, my Uncle Felix is buried there. He was in World War II. And my great-uncle Willie, he was in World War I. And we observed the others who lay there having given themselves in service to this country. And then we came back up, we call it a pig trail, it goes from Swanee back down into Orm. And my mother, when she was a little girl, it's five miles across there. She used to walk that to visit family. We went up through there and came out at Swanee. And, buddy, we came down by the great university out to the edge of the mountain where there is a 30-foot uh, cross. And on that cross at the base, as you walk around it, you see a plaque to those that died in World War I. On the back side, World War II. Over here are those that died in the Korean War. And then around here, Vietnam. And down in front, there is a plaque remembering those who died in 1991 during Desert Storm. And Jim Austin, I'm sure there's going to be a plaque erected in honor of those who have died in Afghanistan in this latter experience in Iraq. And we stood there in awe. Nobody could say a word. And then from there, we went on out to the edge of the mountain, and there's a huge rock there. And so we climbed up on the rock, and all of us stood there together looking out across the valley. As far as the eye could see, and it gave us a larger view of the world that we grew up in. 
it was all most Martha, it was almost like a transcendental experience. And to understand that in the context of a world that has given so many in the hellish experience of these wars, that somehow we continue in a great nation to maintain our sanity and our freedom of worship. Oh, because he lives, I also live to the glory of God, to the glory of God. Amen.